So one of the things I love most about Trippin is when you find this small town where the stories are all like a hundred years old, but then mixed in with them, you find these modern stories that are still being written to today. It's like our Wild West past and our soon to be Texas traditions all mixed in one. And man, this is gonna be a good day trip. Hako! Well, that's a short sign. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Heiko is right here. In this part of Texas, we still don't have a great name for it. From Dallas or Fort Worth, it'll only take about an hour and a half. And that's plenty of time to go from big city to small country. Here we are, Heiko, Texas, where everybody is somebody. Or so says the sign. <laughs> It's true, and while this town may have less than 1,500 permanent somebodies, well, everybody that lives here or visits can find something to do. Hi, Co. Hi, Co. It's off to trip we go. Hi, Co. Hi, Co. Hi, Co. Hi, Co. The entire town has literally one traffic light. But here in Texas, we don't need big cities to have big legends. In recent years, Heiko has really started to heat up with shops and restaurants. But before we explore Heiko's historic main street, let's explore Heiko's most historic tale. So throughout the history of Texas, there are a few names whose legend is as big as the Lone Star State itself. Among them are people like Davy Crockett, LBJ, Willie Nelson. And on that very select list, there's the name of an outlaw. Not so much a hero, but more of a gunslinger, Billy the Kid. Officially William H. Bonney or Henry McCarty, but known on the frontier as Billy the Kid. But let's back up a bit for some history and the full story. Okay, so Billy the Kid was a really bad dude. He was an outlaw on the run for most of his life. I mean, the guy killed maybe five people, maybe 25 people, no one knows for sure. But he shot people down in saloons, in fields, in the middle of the street sometimes. Uh, one time, he even killed the mayor. Wait, I think it was a deputy. No, no, it was a sheriff. Yeah, he killed a sheriff. He was like, bam, bam, die, sheriff, because you killed my friend. And the sheriff just died right there. Now, he did get caught a few times, but every time he was like, this jail can't hold me, and he would straight up bust out and run away. So Billy's arch nemesis is this sheriff named Pat Garrett. And Garrett's like, I'm gonna catch Billy the Kid if it's the last thing I do. And he thinks he's got him in New Mexico. So Garrett goes to Billy's friend's house and he's like, hey man, where's Billy the Kid? And the friend's like, yo dude, I don't know what you're talking about, but who should walk in? Billy the Kid. Now the history books will tell you this is the moment that Pat Garrett shot Billy down. Boom, boom, right in the chest and Billy died on the floor. But if you believe the folks in Heiko and a whole lot of others, well, Billy didn't die that night. Some believe Pat Garrett actually shot Billy's friend. And when he realized it, he was like, this is actually Billy the Kid, right? Oh uh, yeah, so bury him quick before other people can take a close look. But maybe Pat Garrett had Billy and he was like, Billy, now that I've caught you, I have to wait for this truck to pass so I can finish my story. Is it out of the way now? We'll wait for him. Got a real train happening got a whole parade. I know. No one respects history anymore. This is, this is, yeah. All right, but anyway, Pat Garrett's got Billy the Kid and he's got him cornered and he's like, Billy, now that I've caught you, I've fulfilled my life's purpose and I don't know what I'll do if you're no longer on the run. Run away, Billy, run away and never return. Kind of like Scar told Simba in Lion King, to which Billy said, okay, cool, I can do that. So Billy ends up in Heiko, Texas, but the deal is he never tells a soul who he actually is. Well, over 50 years go by, and then this lawyer investigator guy from Florida gets a hot tip about Billy the Kid still being alive. So he travels to Heiko and finds this old guy named Brushy Bill. He knocks on his door and he asks the old man, are you Billy the Kid? And the old guy's like, no, you're crazy, go away. But the guy keeps 
keeps knocking on the door. And he's like, no, for real, I need to know, are you Billy the Kid? And finally, Brushy Bill looks him right in the eyes and he says, I am Billy the Kid. Dum, dum, dum. But the attorney is not so easily convinced and he says like, well, then you need to prove it to me. And he says, well, check out these awesome scars. Oh yeah, and these stories that only Billy the Kid would know, like that time where I did that one thing and that other time I shot that guy, bam, bam. So the guy in Florida's like, okay, sounds good to me. I believe you're Billy the Kid. But he didn't stop there. He went around and got statements from other outlaws who knew Billy, and they all said the same thing. Yep, Rushy Bill is Billy the Kid. Absolutely Billy the Kid. So now that the secret's out, Brushy Bill thinks to himself, I'm gonna go and get that pardon from the governor of New Mexico that I was promised. But before he can do it, he's walking to the post office one day, boom, massive heart attack. Billy the Kid dies on the streets of Heiko. And that's the story of Brushy Billy the Kid, my friends. Outlaw, old guy, Texan. But is it true? Well, no better place to find out than at the Billy the Kid Museum, right here in the heart of town. And this is its director, Sue Land. Now, you guys here in Heiko believe this story, right? We do. Now, I'm new to Heiko, so I didn't, but I do now. The only story I knew about Billy the Kid was Hollywood's version. Brushy Bill told his story back in 1950, right before he died. And the things he told were too accurate and too true that he had to either be at Billy's elbow or be Billy. Then the fact that the young man that was shot and killed by Pat Garrett in July of 1881, the description never matched Billy and everybody always questioned it. It's quite That's an interesting story. Very interesting story. <laughs> this museum certainly makes a strong case for Brushy Billy, and it's a legend that attracts visitors from all over the world. I think that legend will continue to grow because the only way you can positively prove is you got to take a DNA from his bones, which we can, but there is no known living descendant of Billy the Kid. So it seems this will officially remain unsolved for now. But hey, that's okay. I mean, we all need a little more mystery in life, right? But what isn't so mysterious is this noise coming from my stomach. And I can solve this case quickly with a trip up the street to ice. It's the German word for ice cream. And as expected, well, they got ice cream covered. But their menu also covers a variety of sandwiches made as local as they can be. And this is owner Wes Lunsford. So, dude, Wes, I like your place, man. Thank you. Yeah, I can tell that the whole menu, it's like based on the location of where the ingredients came from. Seems like you're trying to do a very Texas kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. we really wanted to just focus on all small Texas companies, mainly because they all do it the right way and uh, make it with good ingredients and stuff that you can really stand behind, you know? Pickles from Austin, soda from Dublin, ice cream from Plano, cheese from Veldheisen down the road. Dude, the jalapeno pimento cheese is amazing. You want to try it? I'd love to. All right. Yes. A sample of that, fellas. We got the Veldheisen jalapeno cheddar in there, pimentos, pickled jalapenos, fat-free yogurt, and mayonnaise with it. Really good mayonnaise. Oh, my gosh. Using that farmhouse cheese just takes it to another level. Yes, it does. That's the best pimento cheese I've ever had. All right. That is. So I understand y'all own a couple other businesses too, right? Yeah, we've got a little three room inn upstairs called the Upstairs Inn. It was basically the old telephone telegram office back in the day. The building was built in 1902. Next door we have a little wine shop, Texas craft beers. We have a lot of Texas wines. Texas upon Texas. But I need more of that pimento cheese. So I'm getting it grilled up with a little sweet tomato jam on sourdough. Well, this is going to be good. But I'm also getting to sit down with a couple of my kinfolk. My Aunt Sheila, who is the principal here in Heiko, and my cousin Pat Ross, the queen bee of city council. So it's not often on day trips I get to sit down with my family and talk about small town Texas. I remember as a kid, there wasn't much going on down here at all. I tried. It's amazing how you, on a weekend, it's just crowded. It's just like a little mini Frederick's Park and people are walking it up there shopping. You know, yeah. when you go down to downtown Heiko to go to a bar to listen to a band, <laughs> you know, it's That's a middle. change in time. I mean, <laughs> it's turned into I a party mean, city. I mean, it is. <laughs> this restaurant is proof that things are getting hip in Heiko. But since I got a few longtime locals here, well, I gotta ask them. Now, did you know anybody growing up in Heiko that knew Brushy Bill? I knew him. Oh, you knew him? He was very colorful. He wore these bright colored vests. Always a handkerchief around his neck. 
never wanted anyone behind him. And then his arms was right down here like he was. At any moment, he could pull out the pistol, huh? Yes. Why she feel was Billy the Kid in my I believe From the research I, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> Everyone in Heiko believes that they get kicked out. Your citizenship application. Well, after this morning, I know two things for sure. One, Ice has an excellent lunch. And two, Brushy Bill was definitely Billy the Kid. Probably. But now it's time to shift gears a bit and start exploring all there is to do here in downtown. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. So here we are on the streets of Heiko. We learned about Billy the Kid. We stuffed our bellies at lunch. I think we're just gonna kinda wander around and get into some trouble. Heiko kinda feels like it could be on the back lot of a Hollywood studio, between its old buildings and old murals. And check this out, look, a lot of these old murals got preserved. Ever ready radio batteries? Bright and early coffee. Nice. Like most Texas towns, there's plenty of antiquing to be had. This one is inside of the old opera house. Look at this old building, this is so cool. Why do people collect these? I don't know what the clown thing was. Don't know. Nice, artillery shells. I'm not so much into antiques, but I love man antiques. Antiques, yeah. I don't know why this isn't in the Billy the Kid Museum, because clearly this is a kid pistol. And speaking of guns. Left-handed guns? It's a gun shop just for people like me. So what, you're, you're not left-handed? So, no, you're right, I'm not left-handed, but I am left-eyed, so I have to shoot left-handed. And you right-eyed people think you run the world, don't you? Well, not here. This is left-handed guns and we're in charge. There's also the recently renovated Midland Hotel that hosts live music and popcorn. Oh, cool. They got like all these flavors. Chipotle ranch, dill pickle, buffalo, garlic, parmesan. Heiko Popcorn Works makes all of its goods right here in store. The sweet and the salty. This one's called Billy's Trio. Cheddar Jalapeno Ranch mixed together. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, this is definitely tingling my taste buds, but it's only one of Heiko's artisan food makers. And next, we're headed to Wiseman Chocolates. So, homemade, handmade chocolate right here in Heiko. And my favorite part of visiting, samples. It's named after the historic home in which it sits, and every room is packed with goodies. But before I literally eat this place out of house and home, well, let's learn a little more about it with owner Kevin Winsel. There are very few of these really craft chocolate type of places in Texas. Right. It's not necessarily something we associate with cowboys and cattle and ranching and that kind of thing. Yeah, but good chocolate is good for everybody. That's good philosophy right there. You know, they say art is good for everyone too. And this is both chocolate and art. And the truffles, well, that's where it all started. It started with the Jack Daniels truffle. We call it Southern Hospitality. Try one. Just pop the whole thing? Well, no, I would uh, take a bite, enjoy the aroma, but you want to take your time like you would sitting and enjoying sipping good whiskey. Mm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. You don't need your teeth at all. You should not use your teeth, take really. Take time, yeah. This is good for people with no teeth, too. <laughs> uh, you have to try this one. This is a wild woman truffle, two kinds of Belgian dark chocolate, and a whipped cream ganache. Everybody, just wait. You'll now watch me eat chocolate for the next 10, 20 minutes. I think that is the best chocolate I've ever had. Oh, so delicious. But now Michael has invited us to his downtown workshop, a place where dreams come true. There's liquid chocolate, truffled chocolate, and Wiseman favorite, almond toffee, to be coated in chocolate. But it is a process. What we have to do is break these up into squares. That's pretty easy, right? Sounds easy enough. Take them, we're just snapping, Snap snapping them up to the squares. Yeah, so it's you, like glass. And what about like these ones that are like poorly shaped so you can't really sell Those them, you so have then you to just... Eat. Yeah. Oh, okay, there, that was my question, really. <laughs> you know, this has taken a little while. I got an idea to speed up production a bit. You hold this, I'm gonna karate chop. Okay, right in the middle. Right? Okay. Oh! oh. <laughs> 
Oh, boy. Sorry. Look, 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 it's that all was the, bad. It's all on the ground. You, you should have vetoed that idea. You should have vetoed. You, that was a bad fault. idea, Kevin. You made that his fault. You, why are you letting me make decisions back here in your kitchen? This is truly playing with food. We even get to paint it with gold. Do you want to paint some? Sure. Just to draw a line. Okay, just, yeah. just a line. Yeah. One stroke. I'm nervous. I'm shaking over here. Oh, that was, whoa, it's a river. You just get, whoa, that one's even, oh, oh no, this is gone, this has gone bad. Yours are much prettier than mine. I'll pass that back, right, yeah, thank you. <laughs> One of the greatest parts about Wiseman is that they host handmade chocolate classes for a hands-on experience. And well, when it comes to coating truffles, it is truly hands-on. Uh, are you gonna put your hands in chocolate? In that bowl of chocolate? Yes, yes. I am like that kid in Willy Wonka who gets sucked into the chocolate milk. We'll river. do that later. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Like oh, this. just go ahead. Go just ahead. right. De just, just the top. Stuff. I don't know why it feels feels, feels wrong right now. Here we go. Oh, oh. Massage. That feels good. Oh, it's it feels warm. so good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Boop. Now, oh, just yeah. a massage. Just massage. Just delicately. That's going to melt in your hand if you don't be careful. Okay, then back into the cinnamon That's sugar. That's right. And now I pick up another one. You know, it's a good thing I don't really work here, or else they would totally lose money on me. But what fun for both my mouth and my hands. Well, Kevin, this was really good. Thanks. Thank you. You got a little <laughs> something right there. <laughs> I'm not falling for that one. You didn't fall for my handshake either. No, I don't. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> And now for something completely different. So as you might expect in this part of Texas, most of the outdoor activities revolve around things like ranching and farming. And what we're about to go and do is farming related. Well, sort of. Welcome to Siloville. Four abandoned grain silos turned into a climbing gym. This is Dan, who with his wife, Kathy, made this ag-inspired dream possible. This is a cool idea. I guess, you know, in this part of Texas, there's really not much rock climbing. No. So no. You, got, <laughs> you got to find something to do it on. These are 66 feet tall, so that's as high as a lot of cliffs that people go and climb in Mother Nature. So what did these used to hold? Probably wheat, rye, oats. But they haven't been used since the early 1970s. Basically, we had to drill hundreds and hundreds of holes, drive in an anchor, and then we can bolt holds on them. That is awesome. And with this system, they can move holds around to change up the climbs or make easier routes for beginners and youngsters. And oh yeah, they didn't just do this to the outside. So after harnessing up, well, it's time to climb. Here we go. What is it, 66 feet of grain silo goodness, right? Yep, it is. Here we go. Woohoo! What's up, Dan? Hey, how's it going? Hey, man, I'm usually climbing alone. It's good to have you up here with me, man. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> it was much easier when I was closer to the ground. This is fun. Have you looked down yet? I'm trying not to think about that, Dan. <laughs> to think I'm climbing inside of a grain silo in Heiko, Texas. This is just too awesome. Two more steps. Woohoo! Yeah! All right, I'm, I'm coming down. Ooh, feels good. Let's go climb out in the breeze, shall we? And I thought I'd ask Dan to join me on this one. So what was it about climbing you think that hooked you? It's a thinking sport. How do I want to move? What hold am I going to grab next? Can I stop thinking about how high I am? <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is, you're not thinking about work and email and all that garbage. Just think about the wall. Right. Even a bad day climbing is better than a good day at work. <laughs> hey. Ah, yeah, boom. We made it. And our reward? Well, the best view of Heiko. Water Tower, Pecan Street. There's a high school. Yep, I see it. Oh, beautiful. Here we come! Whoa, ho, ho! Ho! Oh, good job, brother. Thanks, man. The climbing is awesome here, but it's not all. Whoa, check it out. They even have a Ninja Warrior course, which is a good thing, because I brought my Ninja Warrior suit. Ninja power is coming out! Ah! 
a ninja spell. I'm more of a blend in sort of ninja. Ninja strengths aren't as strong as they used to be. It was probably the popcorn and the chocolate and the pimento cheese. Yeah, I'm gonna need my ninja stunt double. Good job, stunt double. Wow, he makes me look good. Keep it up, keep it up, stunt double, good job. What a nice, relaxing day. It's probably gonna be sore tomorrow. Mmm, popcorn, yes. Well, that made it really easy. Time to move out of Siloville to our next stop. You know, and there is one place on day tripping that I never call in the stunt double, and that's when I eat. Yes, behind the plate, I do my own work. Especially at a place like the Coffee Cup Family Restaurant. Started in 1968, the Coffee Cup is a Heiko institution if there ever was one. This is current owner, Irene Leach. I don't have a coffee cup. Let me get you one. Well, that's first order of business. Let's Girl, find a coffee cup. Can we get him a coffee cup and some coffee? <laughs> Here we go. Thank you very much. Ooh. That feels right. Yeah, it is right. <laughs> so do you have a, a steady flow of regulars in here who are here, you know, pretty much every day? Pretty much every day, yes. Wow. Yes. They all sit at this table, actually. The table itself is emblazoned with the coffee club members that have passed on. Because the people who walk in these doors are more than customers. They're like family. But don't be fooled by the name. I mean, this place is much more than coffee. It's all homemade from rolls, cornbread. We bread our chicken fried steak, our chicken strips, our onion rings. It's all from scratch. There's no pre-bought, pre-mixed, anything. So it's like grandma's cooking here. Yes, yes including 16 different homemade pies that even grandma would be proud of. We probably make anywhere from 50 to 100 pies a day, probably about 150 on the weekends, and we sell out almost every day. Wow. And you're coming from San Antonio to Dallas, or Dallas, Fort Worth to Austin, yeah. and people are stopping for pies, so it's amazing. Man, so this place is way more about the pie than it is about the coffee. Well, you know, coffee and pie kind of go hand in hand. Oh, I guess, so, you, I guess um, you're right. <laughs> You know what else goes with coffee and pie? Chicken fried steak and onion rings. Now, I will need pie in just a little bit, but first I gotta polish this off. Now this is a chicken fried steak. Woohoo, doggy. <laughs> Love it. How we can make a meal out of the golden brown, you see? Who needs any other colors? Just, just get out of here, come on now. We got crispy chicken fried, crispy onion rings, and golden brown homemade rolls. You know, in a town that hosts the Texas Steak Cook-Off, I had to get some form of steak. Chicken fried steak counts, right? A little meat, a little crisp. Oh man, this right here is just what Texas country life is supposed to taste like. Super tender, perfectly golden brown, crispy outside. This is heaven right here. Check these babies out. Oh yeah. That's phenomenal. You can gravy onion rings, trust me. I do this for a living. You can put cream gravy on anything. Onion rings, rolls. You can even put cream gravy on cream gravy and just eat it. What a day. Heiko has some of Texas's richest history and richest chocolate. And whether you're looking to investigate an old mystery, shop around, climb to the top, or eat, well, Heiko has it all, including all of the pie. Rules of day tripping. When you can't decide, just get them all. Oh man, this might take me a while. But anyway, the episode's over. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. Ah, Black Forest next, here we go. Bam, bam, or bam, bam. Kind of dip down into it. Bam, bam. <laughs> bam, bam. <laughs> bam. 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 <laughs> Any questions, guys? Was Billy Simba? So Pat Garrett is actually Scar, and Billy the Kid is Simba. And I'm pretty sure that influenced Disney. No. But what is the elephant graveyard? Well, that's still Oklahoma. Yeah, the light doesn't, <laughs> the light doesn't touch that. That's right. The light doesn't touch that part. No. OK, that makes sense. Let's cut it.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.